Hey friends, just showing you the rust that I let the cam soak in on the D2 dozer. See that? This is all the rust. Let it soak in here for a week. And then that was the head bolts and the cam on the from the D2. And the rocker assembly. So gravity flow this out of here. That way I don't disturb it. Because I'm going to reuse this WD-40. Because this stuff is almost 40 bucks a gallon. So... I got a see-through hose so I can see it coming. And I just got a coffee filter, nothing crazy. That's about all I want to get that's clean. Now I can reuse this WD-40. So you can see this stuff is pretty, pretty nasty. See how thick it is? Pretty nasty. That was just from the head bolts and the cam. So I'm gonna take this to the dump and recycle it. We're not gonna try to use that. That's pretty nasty. And then I just use these little coffee filters to help filter some more stuff out. They fit pretty nicely in a funnel, kind of like a cone shape. Okay, I'm gonna clean up this and then we can get to the tank. I just need to get a plug in there just so the water doesn't come out. So it doesn't need anything special. Let's get this just so it gets a water seal. I'm just putting water in there, so. And there's more dirt on here than tape. So it's not the correct thread, but with this tape, it should get a water seal. Pretty confident that'll seal. Okay, we got a seal on that. Okay, I'm gonna go flush this out with water and I'll be right back. Electrolysis on this D2 Dozer Pony Tank. I'm not a professional, I wouldn't recommend this, but this is what I was researching. Uh, works really good. You can use a rust, but it's like 35 a gallon or so where I'm at and you can use vinegar and baking soda, I guess that works pretty good too. Um, but this is the only thing I have on hand. I filled this with spring water. Yes, it should be distilled water, but I'm just using what I have on hand right now. So I got this flushed out several times before I'm going to hook it up to the electricity because this did have gas in it. So it could blow up in your face if you make a spark in here and you don't really rinse out that gasoline really good before you start this also another thing make sure you fill this up to the top that way it leaves no space for the hydrogen gas because if you fill this like halfway then half of that tank is going to be hydrogen gas is extremely flammable so when you're pulling this probe out if you left it hooked up to electricity and you and you touched it and it sparked for some reason boom you're dead so Highly don't recommend doing this, but if you're outdoors and you're smart about it, it should be fine. So what I'm what I'm gonna do just for the video. Um, so it has to it takes time for the hydrogen gas to start building. So I'm gonna be able to show you guys uh, the reaction, and I want to make sure it's working. So I'm gonna have to take this cap off to show you guys. So I'm gonna show you guys the reaction. I heard that 12, so you're supposed to top this off with water. So it's completely topped off. And then a tablespoon of baking soda per gallon is what Google said. And I need space for the baking soda. I don't think it really, I think you just need enough. It doesn't matter if you add too much. 
just to help the water conduct better is from my knowledge. I'm going to shake this up a little bit to get that baking soda. Okay, we got the baking soda in there all mixed up. Now just to show followers how this works. So... Hook up my jumpers quick. So, make sure I guess you ground the negative to the tank or whatever you want to clean. So, I'm hoping this tank's bolted to this. Hopefully, it's not painted. It's kind of hard to grab a spot to ground here. Okay, I'm going to show you this bolt. Hooking the positive to the bolt. And it should start bubbling if we have power. See all that sparks? Maybe this bolt's not working because it's zinc. I'm going to try something that's a steel real quick. Well, this bar is a little long, but... See if this works. Okay, so it's not getting much of a reaction. I thought it was going to do better than that. Maybe because his batteries are completely dead. Well, it's not getting much of a reaction, so let's just run it and see what happens. Okay, we're rocking 8 amps. We're hooked up to a battery, so I have some kind of a capacitor all these are getting pretty good connection I got a ground right there not the best ground but I think it'll work it was sparking so something's working so I'll check it in the morning and see what it looks like let's get to the carburetor we are going to tear into this carburetor I've got some chem dip so this carburetor is completely plugged up I was really happy I got it to split apart without messing up that jet. That makes me really happy because I heard if that fails, if you crack this jet right here, you pretty much got to have a machine shop make it. It is freezing out here. It's a little too big. I got a bunch of stuff here. I'm going to break this down so I can soak it in this cleaner. Ugh. Okay. And then I got some BB so we can plug up those holes if we have to.
Okay, got the linkage off. This thing looks like it's in pretty good shape. And this thing still has the little check valve thing on it. I guess that's to keep it running. If you run it all the way, if you shut it, it'll still breathe or something. Um, there's a little jet in there. I'm not gonna mess with that. Kind of uh, indoors here, so I don't have too much spraying right now. Get some of this stuff off so it doesn't contaminate the chem dip so much because it's 40 bucks where I'm at for some chem dip. So I'm going to try to make it last as long as possible. Can shake this. Clean this up right here. Holding it sideways so the metal doesn't drop inside of the carburetor. Got a rebuild kit for this thing. It's supposed to be here in a couple days, so I'm going to let it soak in that chem dip for a couple days. Should give it plenty of time. And then I'm going to try to get what jets I can out of there. Oh, look, I already cut myself. What the hell? Well, I finally get to go start splitting some wood tomorrow. It's been a while. I've been doing a lot of wrenching. I haven't been able to cut any wood. Sure, it'll be nice to start winching some timber here. My own equipment. I've been uh, cutting tree service wood for man, I don't know, almost two years now. I've been getting tree service wood, and that tree service wood is so dirty. I'm just getting tired of sharpening my chain and peeling dirt off logs. It's going to be nice to have my own dozer and um i don't have a log art so we'll see how it's going to skid logs uh if i can find the log art for a reasonable price um probably like to pick one up or uh, at least get some kind of a forestry style uh rollers i forget the name of them but it picks up the log off the ground from the winch um it's like a high roller forgot the name of it but yeah it's pretty much a must if you want to keep your logs clean and it's easier on the machine too because you're not sticking the butt of that log into the dirt trying to drag it but I was also told you're supposed to have a high track if you're going to be winching the logs off the ground because um, it distributes the weight on the rollers a little better so I got this hook and pick set. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to get this going. I'm pretty sure it's going to fire. I uh, checked the radiator fluid. It's been sitting overnight. And uh, it's not getting into the engine. So, And I have the radiator topped off with fluid. So... It is going to freeze in like three or four days, so I was hoping to flush it out before then. I might have to actually just flush it out before the freeze, so it doesn't get damaged. But it hardly freezes up here when it does. It's just like 28 degrees, 25 degrees. We don't get the real hard freezes. It's usually just enough to snow and make it miserable. It's real hard to work up here in Northern California. It never, the ground never freezes when you need it to, when you're doing work and tree work and stuff. It always, I swear, every time I have a job I'm doing, it's, it just snows just enough to make it slushy and, yeah. This is looking pretty good. Okay, I'm not going to do too much more messing around here. 
So I can see through there. That's good. I honestly don't think this carburetor is too bad. I was more worried that I was going to damage it. Okay, so I think the carburetor is ready to... This part is ready to go on the chem dip. I'll try to get that out later, hopefully. Might have to put a little bit of heat on it. And I believe this part... Take that out just in case. Yeah, this is a little filter here, so I got some compressed air. I don't know. We don't want to soak that, so that's good. Get that out of there. A little bit of rust in there, but not too bad. Probably clean that up a little bit. Oh, that was way too much. I like these brushes with that tip. That's kind of nice. I've been rocking the Harbor Freight ones for a while. I got these ones from O'Reilly's. They definitely seem like they're a little better. We should use some wind free <laughs> paper towels, but I used them all on the dozer down there, so that's it, they're gone. have been in here and service this. That actually looks pretty good. This thing just fell out. Interesting. Huh. That might be our problem. Look at that. All kinds of crud. Looks like they glued it in there. That was kind of weird how it fell out. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, yeah, that's, I'm not trying to get this 
Seems like they're all pretty good. This thing's pretty good. Everything's not plugged, so that's good. It's float. <laughs> I checked it, it floats. Jets and stuff, huh? Yeah, this float. I should probably just get a new one now. Wow. Yeah, this is so loose. That's got to be out of spec. I think I'm just going to order a new one. Yeah, I didn't notice that last night, but this thing is really loose. Check this, this was good. Could be sticking. Wonder if I can get it all the way. Get the box. Ooh, that might work.
Fuck. Yeah, pretty easy to break too. Oh, I got it off. Wow. Nice. I'm going to try to get new one of these. Because this thing is stripped low. Okay, now. Cool. I'm happy with that. I don't know if I'm able to find one of these. Looks like a regular like gas fitting type deal. Huh. Well, I can always try at least. Try to get a new one. Okay, we got everything dismantled. I just couldn't get this big jet out here, but I'll let it soak before I mess with that. Maybe put just a tiny bit of heat on it. One of them had to be plugged. It was not getting any gas. So I'm thinking that the float was wore out. It might not let the gas on. So it fills up and then turns off. So if the float was wore out, but this float is so loose, maybe the play isn't quite turning the gas on. So it fills up and then tells the gas to turn off. And I'm thinking if this had play in it, that it would probably just get too much gas. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Comment down below if you have a better idea. Okay. I'm going to let this things soak as well not the bowl oh. yeah I can put clean this thing out I got a bunch of crud in it already I'm definitely gonna try to put a regular filter in here because those the little aluminum ones, they don't do much. The old school cat one. <laughs> yeah, I usually don't tear down carburetors like this. I just try to find a replacement. I'm more of a bolt-on mechanic. It's just nice if you can get a part, especially if you can get a warranty. And you just put it on and you're done with it. I've got a warranty, but for some reason this old caterpillar man of getting my mechanic itch is coming back and I uh, want to work on it. And I actually tried to look for a carburetor too and I couldn't find one. And yeah, so here I am trying to fix this old boater. This carburetor is actually not too bad to work on, it's just taking it off the machine was pretty tricky let's take this off and I mean, I just hit this with some brake cleaner right now. <laughs> I think we're about ready. The studs are pretty dang clean. Okay, I'm actually surprised. We got all the jets out. Yeah, we got all of them out. Wow. There's like a little jet in there. But it's like a... It's not a screw. Weird. Well, I ain't messing with that one, that's all I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we are ready to soak. Well, I sure don't remember where all these went. Glad I recorded it. I'll let these bolts soak as well. I guess. Make it easier to put them in. I'm actually going to buy a new one of those. I have to hit that one with that wedge. That sucked. Dun, 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 dun. We got the Kim Queen. Let me read the directions real quick. Submerge. 
in the basket and allow to soak for 15 to 30 minutes. Remove parts and rinse with water to clean consumer buildup. Allow longer soak time. To remove extremely heavy carbon, allow to soak overnight. Rinse with water and clean with a wire brush if necessary. Do not soak coated or sensitive aluminum parts over four hours. Cast iron and low alloy steel should be coated with penetrating oil such as Berryman, easy do it. After the rinsing to prevent flash rusting, for best results along with life, remove loose dirt and excessive grease before soaking on parts. So only overnight. That actually didn't take that long. I thought that was going to take way longer. These caterpillars are, you know, they're pretty easy to work on. Okay. Well, that basket is kind of small. Alrighty friends, I am done. Okay friends, I'm gonna flush out this tank. It sat overnight and wow, look at all that rust coming out of there. The amperage on the charger is at four amps. So it was a little higher, so. I did do some more research on this and I found out if you mix the baking soda with hot water, it mixes better in the water and it should conduct a little better is the theory behind it. So on this next round, I'm gonna flush this out and then I'm going to get some hot water and mix it with baking soda. And then we'll we'll keep flushing it until this thing is clean. So do not forget, always unplug this thing before you touch this. Because if you make a spark in there and there's hydrogen gas, you are done for. So that's the only problem with doing this. It's extremely dangerous if you make an accident. So I was kind of, you know, if we had a windstorm and it blew this tarp and made it spark, it could blow up. But it's outside, so I'm not too worried. So I'm going to very carefully unhook these jumper cables and these are just some tiny jumping cables i got for free that i'm using here so i'm going to take both off just to be on the safe side <laughs> okay so we are completely disconnected no power whatsoever and then i have a clean somewhat clean white container I can pour this into because I can't really show you, you guys like what's going on inside the tank because there's not much visibility I got a shot in the earlier series so my problem I'm seeing here is I drilled some holes for the cap to vent and they plugged up so Hydrogen's getting stuck in here. I'm gonna have to drill some more holes in this or just be really careful Wow look at that that is disgusting that is pretty disgusting So let's try to get all this stuff in here so we can kind of get an idea of how much buildup Wow That wow I honestly didn't think it would work that good. I thought it was going to take a lot longer. Okay, so let's pour this into here. Let's shake this around a little bit before I lose all my liquid. What's great about this method is I don't have to worry about taking this stuff to the dump. All the other chemical ways you gotta, you know, recycle the chemicals or you gotta take them to the dump. 
Some dumps will charge. I have a feeling this is going to take a while. Wow. It actually looks pretty dang good in there. Wow. Now that this camera will pick that up, but. See, that was all rust before. I'm not seeing any rust. I, th I believe since this is such a small tank, that it is, it is conducting really good. If it was a larger volume, it would probably take uh, longer to get the rust out. But since it's such a small tank, it's just, it's cooking that stuff right out of there. And I don't even have a 24 volt system. From what I researched, you're supposed to have a 24 volt, but this works. I just think it's going to take a little longer, so. Okay, I'm going to go flush this out. Then we'll get some hot baking soda water one tablespoon per gallon 